say um, we're happy to have folks here from St. Mary's University this week and get to know a little bit. And uh, they've got a program this week of the, of the year where they go out and promote what they're doing. And uh, so we're happy to have them and uh, give them their attention and think of some questions you might have for this email this week. So thank you for being here. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Sam Borowski. I'm the assistant softball coach and also um, the advisor for SAC, which is um, our student organization on campus, um, who kind of like listening to the athlete's voice. So we have about 43 members in it. Um, right now, I'm joined with Robbie, who is a men's tennis player and men's soccer player. So he plays two sports at the collegiate level. And I'm also here with Des, who is a men's track and field, you know, just track and field, right? Track and field. He does multiple events. Um, so they're going to just talk to you a little bit about being a Division three athlete. Um, so if you guys, they'll kind of talk about a couple different points, and then if you guys have any questions, you should pick their brains about just what it means to be a Division three athlete um, and kind of what that all entails. Division three, since there are no direct athletic scholarships, you don't feel like just because you didn't get recruited to play that sport that you can't play that sport. Like Robbie, I'm sure had examples, and I have examples of people on my team who got kind of recruited on campus to come play sports. So like, you don't have to go into whatever school you're going to, Division three wise, thinking, you know, just because I didn't get recruited to play that sport, I can't play that sport. You can still talk to the coaches, reach out, try out. You know, if you feel like you have a chance, you still have that drive that you want to play that sport, definitely give it a shot. If they think you're good enough, they'll definitely give you a chance. Um, time management, as far as for Division three, is definitely something that's very, very important. Um, for me, Robbie's going to be different because Robbie's a two sport athlete, but for my sport, my sport starts the very first day of school. It doesn't end until three weeks after school's over. So it's something where you have to be able to kind of see into the future what things you might have to miss, might not have to miss, and just make sure you're very, very personable with your professors and your coaches just to make sure like if you're gonna miss practice or you're gonna be late to class or you're gonna miss class because of for me like meets. Um, just make sure you're reaching out, you know, um, don't be afraid to tell them or ask them if you can miss class or if you need to leave class a little bit earlier for an athletic event or even opposite if you need to kind of be late for practice for a school sponsored event or you need help with a professor, things like that. Just make sure you have no problem reaching out. You know, don't, don't be scared, they're there to help you. So yeah, and if you guys have any questions. Um, in track, I do the 4x1, the 4x2, long jump, triple jump, uh, this time the 400. 
and I did high jump for a bit and uh, in high school. Oh, I went to uh, Nicolet High School in uh, Glendale, Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah, fun fun fact. Um, I was actually technically part of the worst team in Nicolet basketball history, and now it's funny to see that they are the best. So, yeah. But I think um, at the end of the day, this is for you. So I was wondering if you could put that on you and if you could just go through, say, um, your name and then maybe you can have a course or activity that you're in and if you wish to possibly come up to the college level. Um, I 
question. Um, so uh, I toured a lot of schools, um, uh, big schools like uh, University of University of Wisconsin Madison to a lot of our conference schools, um, which are smaller. And um, it's kind of the, the tour and the community at our school that really connected with me there. There's just a plus that I can play for sports. That's, uh, yeah, um, kind of recruiting for yourself. is a, If you really are passionate about wanting to play college athletics, um, that, um, that's a fun process to be um, a part of, actually. Um, but it's going to take some time. Uh, I would say um, send emails to whatever school you're interested in. Um, send them to um, head coach, assistant coach. Um, and have them uh, maybe come out for, for a game or um, event and whatnot and get, get them um, to see you, see you play or just ask, um, hey, can I, can I try out if you, if, you don't, if you didn't have time to um, see me play, for example. Um, but yeah, I think definitely uh, if you're really adamant about it, um, reach, out, reach out to the coaches. Um, but one thing that I think I like to highlight is just like the tour process in general. So um, whatever schools you're interested in, um, even if it's a lot, go tour them, go do an overnight because I think those give you the best understanding of um, the campus life. And um, I think that tour process is a great one to go through. Um, so like, uh, I always say, like when when uh, I give tours at same areas, like I commend you for for taking going through this process because that helps you pick um, the school that's best for you. Um, because at the end of the day, you got to go to the school that you feel like you can be connected to um, for four years and and following. So, yeah, um, research and and really make sure that um, you pick a place that you can feel feel like is your home away from home. Um, that was something I just thought of. Um, so uh, recently, I just got over an injury. I ruptured my spleen. Um, I 
it was like maybe the second kind of biggest injury that I've ever had. I broke my wrist from in a soccer game um, my freshman year, which ended up, I, I played the rest of the, the season, but um, it delayed a little bit of my tennis season. But this one was kind of the most impactful one. So I had mono, but I didn't know it. And anyways, that enlarges your spleen. And I played in a club hockey game at, at St. Mary's. So that was kind of cool too, just a short span with some of my friends. I played in a hockey game. and I got hit there and it ruptured my spleen. So uh, I, was, I was out for a good like four and a half months. And um, uh, that, that, was, that was pretty tough on me, I mean mentally. Um, it made me really listen to my body because there was a couple times that I tried to jump back into action a little too early. Um, but it really made me like trust my, my teammates, trust the process a little bit, and um, understand that at the end of the day, I, oh, this is one thing that I really took away from that. Um, I met with a, one of the doctors who actually had a background in, in tennis, and he played college tennis, and he said, you know what, at the end of the day, um, I maybe remember a few matches, but it was the people who I uh, played with and the school I played for that I really remember. And um, I took that to heart because that's why I enjoy playing college athletics. Um, it's because of the, the memories that I've made um, for that. But that, that was definitely one time where I had to kind of uh, recap and, and look at um, myself. But I think another thing is just simply like tough games. Like, I mean, uh, my soccer and tennis team, for example, we've always been um, just like nipping at the heels of like the higher teams in our conference. So to to be coming from behind or um, just battling in a in a game against um, number fourth team in the nation, you know, you got to really stand on your head and and um, rise to the challenge. So that's I think you get it a lot in athletics. Um, for me, I've been very lucky to not have any um, significant injuries that's kept me out for more than like maybe like one meet. I think the one injury I had throughout my college career is I was high jump practice and I floated over the bar, went too far and my ankle hit one of the standards. So I like I couldn't practice, I couldn't practice and I couldn't go to the meet that week. But besides that, I have um, like the classic jumper's knee. So that's just something like constant, I'm constantly, you know, dealing with. But so yeah, as far as injuries, I've been very, very lucky to not have anything significant where it's kept me out for more than like a week or two. But um, as far as overcoming adversity, I'd say I'm still overcoming, overcoming it and hopefully I can just because every year since my sophomore year at the conference championship, I've always finished second in my event. So I've never actually won. And so like every year that always bugs me, even this year at um, conference, I finished second for both my events for long and triple jump. And I got beat by the same guys. It was kind of like the same situation. I was in first place all the way up until the last jump. So it's something I've been trying to get over with. And it, I mean, always bugs me every day. But it's something I just have to realize. You know, I can't take it personal. You know, getting second in the conference isn't bad. But it's obviously not as good as I know I can be. And then um, another specific example was our outdoor boys four by one. We were in first place the entire race up until our last leg and then our last leg blew out his hamstring and then we ended up getting six still but we were ahead and probably would have made nationals but you know something's tough but we couldn't blame him you know and the thing is I, I knew beforehand I think I was the only one he told that you know he kind of felt that he was like you know my hamstring doesn't feel the greatest but me knowing him he wasn't going to not want to run it he gave it his all so I had to appreciate him for that but yeah, I've been lucky to not have any significant injuries, and as far as overcoming adversity, I still am, and hopefully one day, definitely will. So. Who was yeah. that? The, uh, Kyle. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. The point I was trying to make with my question uh, to you about was there not this really you know, was there not this really pleasant trip with that is you are familiar with the phrase walk. Got it. 
look at the best you can have and the worst you can have. And so, I'm in St. Mary's and many other colleges, you know, the coach thrived. I mean, they just want to see you. They want to see you give it a shot. I won't talk, I won't talk any longer about it. Mm -hmm. And one more thing, I don't know if you remember this back in the 70s. I went to Oxford and I went to a kid that came in from the South, so I walked out and he asked the coach if he was going to make sure he was going to make a national champion. He told me that that's his job when he came to national championships as a head coach. And I was definitely going to make a national championship. I think he was sure to turn that athletic program around and make a kind of a bottom feeder to a very competitive they've got competitive teams and they're a sport now. Uh, not necessarily conscious champions, but they're kind of where you guys are at in the top half of the conference and the first place. That's pretty well. So he yeah, asked the coach to be able to not be cool with them. So yeah. Can you talk about, you know, looking back, are there some things either academically or athletically in high school that you thought you made a really good decision as well, or things you wish you had done differently? Um, I'd say the biggest thing for me, one thing I wish I would have done in high school is probably played my senior year um, basketball. I stopped that from the junior, just kind of focused more on track. And just my relationship with the coach wasn't the greatest, but that's definitely one thing. I always look, up, look back on and wish I would have played because I, even after my junior year, I had a couple letters of interest for basketball, but I just focused on track my whole senior year. So that's definitely one thing I wish I would have continued playing basketball. Um, I would say that has helped me uh, transition well from college. Um, kind of like this, um, just like being involved, like doing it with your whole heart. Um, I, I think um, uh, school can be as great as you want to be. So um, when it comes to academics or extracurriculars, like, put everything in because you can know, find some kind of Great, great out of that, out of that experience, experience. Uh, uh, because, because I, I, um, I took I took my, my school seriously, seriously high in high school. High school. Um, um, and, um, pretty great pretty teachers, great teachers for taught me how to think, think, think for myself. I think they gave me a transition from uh, uh, into college, college where, college where first, at first um, um, semester or two of college can be a little bit overwhelming because you're kind of trying to figure out how to learn, how to learn and, uh, and how to step up your academic level, level a little bit, but, but that's the process, process that I've been letting go through. Going through. But definitely it was easier, 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 eas
And in order to do that, you got to get what um, get your job done in the in the classroom. Um, but another thing that I just thought about for just a plus side of like being on a team, it's 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 enjoyable like uh, being on a team in, in college because like that first uh, year or two, you already have a group. You know, like it's it's tough that first first year trying to figure out and, and meet new people is very exciting, but it's always comforting that you always you already have a group just to begin with. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, kind of piggybacking off what Robbie said with the whole um, academics. It's definitely nice to have kind of a team to look up to as a freshman, knowing like what kind of classes should I take, what classes, you know, what type of professors are there. Um, how do I drop this class? How do I get this professor to build a better relationship with. It's always nice to have that team because you're going to have upperclassmen who've gone through the same things you've gone through as far as like understanding your schedule is just as busy as theirs was, um, especially like specifically with majors. You know, you're going to have a lot of people on the team with the same majors as you, so they're going to be able to help you with certain, you know, things, certain homework assignments, certain st study prep for certain tests, things like that. So it's definitely having the study tables is something I always wish our team did for track and field, but I think the reason is is because our team's kind of bigger because it combines with track and field and cross country. So I think that's the main reason why we haven't had it, but we still have our team still, you know, a lot of our team, most of our team I'm pretty sure are science majors, so they all kind of connect and talk with each other and as far as, you know, what how would lab go, like what's lab, like things like that. So it's nice to have a team because, like what Rob said, you kind of have this like, safety net of people like if you can't find other people that you want to hang out with you're always going to have a team to hang out with that's going to hang out with you so yeah college days and, and uh, listening to you talk kind of brings a lot of those memories back and so we uh, appreciate you having you being there right now being able to impart that message to the and I like the second that you know, strong encouragement of being involved in that college because it, you know, the college experience is wonderful but you can get more out of that experience if you're if you're more involved and you can be part of that athletic part in the future too so uh, thanks again for coming and uh, uh, feel free to draft the